Hello and welcome to Just Have Another Think, our monthly look at the ecological, environmental and social consequences of our 21st century climate emergency. In last month's video, we looked at some of the ways that you can personally make changes to your own lifestyle to reduce your carbon footprint. One of the ideas in that video was to get involved in climate change mitigation activities that are going on within your local community. Community projects are one of the most powerful and effective ways to really capitalise on collective action. And one of the most impressive and inspirational examples here in the UK is an organisation called the Low Carbon Hub, based in Oxfordshire in the south of England. The initiative was founded in 2011 by former head of UK renewable energy programmes at the Department of Trade and Industry, Barbara Hammond, and Saskia Huggins, who brought extensive experience in fundraising and corporate responsibility from her work with the international development organisation Oxfam. Their goal is clear, as you can see from the front page of their website. The Low Carbon Hub is a social enterprise that's out to prove we can meet our energy needs in a way that's good for people and good for the planet. Anyone who's been involved in the implementation of energy infrastructure projects will know that they're actually an extremely complicated undertaking with multiple stakeholders across many organisations. So a collaborative approach has been the key to unlocking the resources necessary to succeed. Today, the Low Carbon Hub puts partnership at the heart of everything they do, working alongside local communities, university academics, city and county councils, as well as private partners, pulling together all those different skill sets and coordinating them in the most effective way for any given project. They're not just coordinators of external projects though, they also own and run their own installations, generating a financial benefit for local communities. The idea is that those projects should result in a genuine cost saving for the end users, and that frees up capital that the Low Carbon Hub can then leverage with investors to implement more projects, and so on and so on. During a recent web chat, Barbara and Saskia told me that there's a real groundswell of private citizens who want to put their savings to work in their local community on projects that provide a tangible benefit as part of the drive towards decarbonisation. The very first project that the hub ran was to install community-owned solar panels on the roof of a church building. Funding was provided by local people who were keen to get renewable energy into their area. And that was followed by similar initiatives to get solar PV onto the roofs of about 30 local schools. The hub supplied and installed the panels and effectively became an energy provider for the buildings. The church and schools got a discount on their energy bills, so they benefited financially, and the hub received the remaining income. Part of that income goes to pay interest to the local people who invested, and the rest goes towards new projects and community benefit programmes. It also enables a low carbon hub to raise further investment in leverage funding from grants and contracts. As well as that, their community energy fund recently raised more than three million pounds at the start of 2021, largely from local residents who are keen to see more green energy projects coming online. The rate of change in the renewable energy sector is quite breathtaking at the moment. The existing centralised fossil fuel driven distribution system was designed to be a one way street going from power plants to your house. The new power structures of the 21st century will be distributed networks where energy is going in all sorts of different directions, both in physical space and virtually across different timelines during a day, depending on the needs of consumers and the balancing requirements of grid operators. As we move into a fully renewables based world with a rapid transition to zero carbon transport and zero carbon space heating, millions of cars, buses and trains will be powered by electricity and millions of homes will need to be upgraded to modern energy efficiency standards with non-fossil fuel space heating and cooling. The Low Carbon Hub are now looking at broader flexibility services as part of a new initiative called Local Energy Oxfordshire or Project LEO, one of the UK's most ambitious, wide-ranging and innovative energy trials, backed by £15 million from the UK's Industrial Strategy Challenge Fund and another £25 million from project partners. As part of that broader community initiative, the Low Carbon Hub installed a hydropower facility in Sanford on Thames just south of Oxford in 2017. It's the largest community-owned hydro scheme on the River Thames, generating enough power for about 450 local homes. Sanford is a real haven for wildlife, so it was vital that the environmental impact of the hydro scheme was kept to an absolute minimum. The project team achieved that by constructing a fish bypass right next to the installation. The bypass includes natural elements like a resting pool and spawning grounds, designed to allow the local wildlife to flourish 
completely unaffected by their new neighbour. The hub are also working to install ground-mounted solar panels on existing low-grade farmland where appropriate. The economies of scale for ground-mounted solar are far better than rooftop solar and as a result of the precipitous drop in the cost of panels, these installations are generating five times the income of their original roof-mounted ones. Just as with the hydro installation though, the environmental concerns are paramount and in that respect, the partners have found that solar ground mount managed well can actually contribute to biodiversity and increase levels of carbon capture into the soil. To optimise the efficiency of energy use for all these installations and therefore minimise energy demand, Project LEO will run household experiments with very smart meters that give the householders much more detail about their own usage and allow them to choose the level of control that they're most comfortable with. Technology will clearly play a very important role in our renewable future, but ultimately it has to be accessible to all the people across all sectors of society. Left to market forces alone, it'll most likely be the folks who can afford a new electric vehicle or solar panels on their home that stand to benefit the most. And as usual, it'll be the less well-off in society who'll get left behind with old, expensive, inefficient and carbon intensive kits. The challenge is to ensure that everyone is included, whether they live in a five bedroom executive home or a one bedroom council flat. And that's really one of the fundamental benefits of community schemes like the low carbon hub. It's a model that could easily be adapted anywhere in the UK and pretty much anywhere in the world where local communities want to have greater control of their energy production and consumption. I'm quite sure there'll be viewers out there who will argue that these sorts of projects should be the sole responsibility of local or national government and energy distribution network operators. And then it shouldn't fall to local citizens to mobilize resources, raise money, and manage the installation of critical infrastructure. But the reality is that we simply no longer have the time to sit patiently waiting for those established institutions to implement solutions. So coordinated collective initiatives like the Low Carbon Hub will play an increasingly important role in our race towards decarbonization over the course of the coming decade. I'll leave links in the description section to the Low Carbon Hub's website and some of the other community-led energy initiatives currently operating. And if you're already running a similar program in your part of the world, or if you're planning to set one up, then it'd be great to hear from you in the comment section below. That's it for now though. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.